Intelligent Machine Monitoring is back. As you may have noticed, we are here in a different setup, and here are my colleagues Tobias and Dominic. Um, actually, we are shooting here at our friends of Cutter Consulting Engineers. Thank you for this. Um, the reason why we are here is that in this fourth feature, we want to talk about sensors. And not only about the measuring principle, but also where they're located on a machine. To give you a better impression of where the, the sensors are actually located, we have a test compressor here in this facility, and my colleague Tobias Alert will give you now a short downturn on this machine um, that you know what we are talking about in detail. Yes, Jules, thanks. Yeah, you see here our little reciprocating uh, compressor. It's a uh, double acting, one throw, and um, we have the head end and crank end compression chamber, and it's a, it's a nice um, vertical machine. And um, it's important to show you very close where are the sensors, and uh, let's start with that. Hello, I'd like to present you uh, the trigger sensor today. Um, the trigger sensor is used um, to provide a phase reference and the speed information of the monitored machine. And I'm going to explain you the principle um, of this sensor first. Uh, later on, I show you where it is mounted. So the trigger sensor is a Namur switch and uh, it's uh, a proximity switch. So it uh, works with uh, the electromagnetic uh, field in the sensor top. Um, this magnetic field, electromagnetic field, um, senses um, electromagnetic material uh, in the sensor sensitivity range, um, passing by the sensor and in the moment when the target or cam is passing by the sensor tip, um, the sensor will switch. Um, this type of um, Namur uh, trigger is um, a normally closed design, um, which means um, in an um, inactive, um, inactivated uh, position or um, um, modus, um, when there's no target in front, um, the switch is closed and the signal is um, a, a high current and uh, in the moment where we um, pass, uh, the target passes the sensor, um, the switch is open and the um, current flow, uh, passing the um, sensors, resistors is um, decreased. And now I'm going to show you where the sensor is located at the machine. Okay. Um, the trigger sensor is pointing towards the flywheel of the compressor and uh, is installed in a rigid bracket that is usually installed on the foundation of the compressor or on the housing of the motor. So um, the trigger sensor is installed in the bracket and is pointing to a target that we call trigger cam. Um, the target is a ferromagnetic um, piece of metal um, mounted at the flywheel, on the flywheel with a metric screw. And as the flywheel is turning, this target passes the uh, sensor tip once per revolution. That means we, we will get a phase reference to the uh, position of the piston, which means we want to make sure we know when the piston reaches the top dead center position. Um, some important um, items for installation of the trigger sensor is we need to get um, the sensor adjusted in a way that the sensor tip um, has a distance to the target of approximately 1.8 up to 2 millimeters to ensure that the sensor is actually working in a secured uh, and safe way and we will uh, not miss revolutions in between. Um, yes, and that is basically the main uh, points to install a trigger sensor. Now we will continue with the next sensor. The next sensor is um, the pressure sensor. 
um, we are measuring um, the pressure inside the compression chamber um, as a dynamic measurement, which is, which is a very fast changing signal, and it, uh, so we need a fast responding sensor. Um, so this sensor is a good example, um, and it, um, some, some special uh, um, design sensor for a special purpose, uh, in this case, with a special uh, tip. Um, the pressure sensors we are using um, have a very wide pressure range, so we can measure from absolute uh, ambient temperature or absolute pressure um, up to a couple of bars, um, but uh, the maximum we can measure is high pressure applications up to 6,000 bars. Um, and the principle of the sensor I'm going to explain you here um, at the whiteboard. I prepared a little sketch so we, we would have um, the co process connection thread of the sensor um, where we screw the sensor inside to the machine. Um, this is here. A typical connection thread would be a one half inch G, which is a parallel thread. Um, we do use a G, uh, GA type of thread. And you see here that um, we have an, an uh, indication, a pathway for the medium, for the gas to enter the sensor. It, the gas will enter the sensor up to this certain point where we have a ceiling and a synthetic oil which is, um, which is used in order to uh, pass on the pressure which is um, measured here at the diaphragm. Um, so the medium is entering the sensor, passing on the pressure through the diaphragm seal, to the through the synthetic oil and the cooling ribs here to the sensor, uh, sensor uh, sen pressure sensing cell. Um, the pressure sensing cell is inside the back part of the sensor here and we will have an electronic amplifier after the, um, right after the sensing cell that provides us a 4 to 20 milliamp output signal of this sensor um, which is intrinsically safe application. And now I'm going to um, show you where the sensor is installed at the compressor. The pressure sensor needs a direct um, indication into the compression chamber and we are going to measure the um, actual changing um, gas pressure inside the compression chamber on both sides, the head end side and the crank end side. A typical um, way to install is uh, an indication bore that is inside the uh, cylinder casing. Um, the sensor is installed either as you see it here on top directly into uh, the um, um, cylinder casing or you could also install an isolation valve. Um, if you want to install an isolation valve, we strongly recommend you to use ball valves instead of needle valves for uh, the better um, signal, the better pressure signal. Um, if you have a needle valve, the gas will not pass the way straight, it will be bent through the needle and uh, the needle valve and then um, we will have influence on the measured signal. This sensor here, as you see, um, could be equipped with a connector on top or the latest uh, types we use has an integral cable with two meter integral cable and then we go to the extension cord. So um, this is f uh, because we want to um, avoid uh, vibrations from the uh, sensor on the connector. Usually when the compressor is uh, in operation, we have high level of vibration on the top of the cylinder and um, that is uh, the best method to have integral cable and you can then attach, attach the um, connectors to a rigid structure outside the compressor. Yeah, let's talk about the acceleration sensor, um, one of the most important sensors we have in our machine uh, diagnostic world, uh, mounted to the machine with a little stud, um, screw it in and uh, 
mounted to the sensor. And on the other hand, for sure, the electrical part, so it's a mill uh, connector, very uh, worked and uh, uh, to have a good electrical connection. Um, the sensor is looking like that, more or less. So we have the sensor housing, and um, in the middle, we have the base uh, element. And on this base element, when we talk about this share, so-called share um, uh, concept, then uh, we have a, a seismic mass uh, close to these, connected with a little size, with a little piezo element. Yeah, and when I look more close about that, then you have a look, that is my piezo element, and you see with all the electronic, and you have the, the plus and the minus, and you see when it's moving, when it's shaking, yeah, it's up and down, these piezo will be shifted and results in, in a special power. And that is more or less what we have here. Um, important is as well to see um, the frequency range. And when you talk about the frequency range, then we have the, um, the frequency about the amplitude. And all the sensors have such a shape and uh, here with the resonance uh, point. And that is important to see that because uh, we are measuring here in the range uh, up to 10, uh, 10 kilohertz from 0.1 0 uh, um, uh, hertz, um, a kilohertz, and measuring this range. And in, in look to the connection, so we, we mo best is to connect it direct to the machine with this uh, uh, stud, uh, but you can also glue it. Some, sometimes you have a, a test probe, and uh, the connection here influenced resonance, so it moves, for example, when you're using a, a, a magnetic uh, connection, for example, it moves further down, or when you have the test uh, port or the test pin, then it's, it's looking like that. So at the end, you decrease uh, your uh, frequency range, what is not good, because we need a high frequency area to understand the, the failure modes. It's an ICP uh, sensor, that means we have, uh, we, we supply current inside the sensor, and uh, output is uh, a voltage uh, signal um, yeah, in a range of um, uh, minus 10 to plus 10 uh, volt. Um, we, these sensors are offered in different sensitivities. Uh, it's from 10, uh, 100, uh, and 500 millivolt per G. And depends on the sensor position, we're using these different types of uh, sensor uh, uh, measuring ranges. Yeah, now I want to show you direct on the machine the sensor positions. Yeah, here our machine, and uh, in the, the bottom part, the crosshead uh, um, slide, um, with the sensor connected direct on the, on the, on the, on the metal frame. And in, uh, here you see a, a variation of the sensor. It's, uh, it's a direct connected. Uh, but for sure, what I showed you before, you can use as well with connector when it's outside of the machine. Um, that is cross-head vibration uh, signal. On, on the other hand, we're looking for the cylinder vibration. Um, and the acceleration measured there, we are close um, to, the, to the valves on the, um, on the cylinder head uh, to, to see really the uh, valve impacts uh, coming up and down. Yeah, here's a nice example uh, to use uh, uh, two compo components, epoxy uh, adhesive, and uh, um, to have a, a good um, connection to this uh, housing of the cylinder. And now I uh, show you the next sensor. And now I'm talking about uh, eddy current proximity probe. We use it uh, for the displacement measurement uh, of the DC and AC value for the piston rod position. 
And it's an uh, eddy current that means we have a coil inside the sensor which influenced a magnetic field to the metal target, our uh, piston rod, and depends on uh, the distance between the sensor and the target material, uh, we got an, uh, a different uh, um, initiated uh, current value, what is sensing by, um, by the coil back and um, given a diff given result. The sensor always works together with a converter, I'm not showing here. You see here the sensor, which is uh, uh, inside the sensor in the, po in the proximity uh, head, we have um, the coil I showed you before. And this uh, coil um, generated the magnetic field depending um, on the uh, material, on the distance to the material, we, we got we receiving a back uh, uh, di definite current, which at the end, the high frequency signal um, give a uh, distance value uh, with, a, with a converter uh, to our system or to the measuring system. Uh, I show you here how it works. Uh, so we, we got in uh, the voltage and depends on the voltage and the sensitivity of the sensor, uh, we, we got uh, the results of, uh, um, of the distance. So that means um, lower distance is in the area of uh, two volt, minus two volt, and uh, higher distance is uh, in the area um, of uh, 18 volt or up to 18 volt. Important is that we always have a linear area yeah, and up a certain point it becomes unlinear. So we have to focus and we have to locate the sensor always that we are in the middle of the linear area. Yeah, so when we start to measure or when we, when we mount the sensor to the um, target, we start with a fixed distance which is in the middle of the linear area. For example, here um, one one volt, or one, uh, sorry, one millimeter. And uh, we call these um, the zeroing uh, of the sensor. One other issue is that we have uh, a so-called air gap. So the sensor is not able to measure close to the, uh, to the target. So it starts measuring in the area of uh, 0 0.1 uh, uh, millimeter. Now I... Uh, show you this uh, sensor located on the machine. Have a close look to the machine. Um, the measuring position of the eddy current proximity uh, measurement is uh, here direct on the piston rod. The position is uh, close to the so-called stuffing box um, and the other side of the motion area of the machine. The sensor is located uh, uh, close to the machine here in X and Y. Um, when we have a horizontal machine, it's, we only have it in, in, uh, on the top uh, uh, solution. And the sensor is uh, adjusted on a fixed uh, um, distance. And so we, at the end, the, measuring, the signal is giving uh, the dynamic and the, and the um, the dynamic and the um, uh, dynamic, the static and the dynamic part. Tobias, Dominic, thank you very much. That was quite a piece. I think you have learned a lot about sensors, their measuring principles, and their location on the machine. Also, thanks again to Cutter Consulting Engineers for having us here. And as always, like, share, subscribe if you like what you have seen, and leave your comments below. See you next time here at Intelligent Machine Monitoring. Thank you.